Over channels command and control two separate things, but kind of one and the same. Command and control commonly used in the botnet world. Uh, for the most part, the, the more advanced uh, malwares will use a, a very covert channel to communicate between uh, the zombie and and the the command server. So uh, most popular protocol being used is uh, HTTP. Um, it's easy to pass data back and forth using requests. Uh, however, to to someone who knows what they're looking for. Even these might, might go unnoticed, they might look like common uh, web traffic uh, alerts or logs, but uh, someone who's, who's really trained can s usually see through these and, and find, uh, especially with a lot of the signatures that are out now for IDSs, uh, it's, it's not long before this communication is, is caught with a signature of some sort and the computer that's a zombie or part of the botnet is found the malware is removed. Talking more uh, on the on the on the threat side, advanced persistent threat. Uh, these guys are using uh, command and control as well as covert channels in different ways. Um, command and control may be used specifically to to control the back door to keep the communication channel open. Um, to tell the computer what to do, download tools etc etc common to what uh, malwares will do now a covert channel when data is exfiltrated out of outside of, of the network is a little different and that's what I wanted to get into how are these covert channels set up and how do they work uh, a covert channel could be used uh, over port 80 HTTP by passing uh, requests back and forth. And these get, these requests could look like they're coming in inter from internal to a, a, a server on the outside. Within the get request string, a string could, could contain data. So what's happening is the threat has compromised your network. He has stolen information. Uh, say this information is a Word file that contains uh, your company's financials. Uh, account numbers, so on and so forth. What they're going to do with that, that Word document, is could they use FTP uh, to, to transfer it outside of your network? Yes, they could. However, what happens is usually logs are seen, logs are captured, that file might even be seen going out. Could they use email? Yes, they could. However, that could be seen going out. Um, in a more covert way, what these threats will usually do is they'll take that document and they might might encrypt it or hash it. They'll slice it up into different fragments, segments, and the segments may not even be in order. They use an algorithm to do this. And what they'll do with, uh, with, with HTTP is in a get string, they'll take a segment of that, they will base64 it out, so say they take 64 bits of, of that file, the header or the footer, wherever inside the file, they take that 64 bits, they'll throw it, they'll base 64 it. Uh, there's a number of, of ways they could encode it, but they'll encode it, throw it in that get request string and send a get request to their server. And what the server does is when it, when it gets that, that get request, it looks at the string, the URI. Uh, and it takes that data and it decodes it and it puts it in the order that it's supposed to receive and this will happen and, and this, could, this could take place over a week, this, this could take place over a day but what, what they're doing is very covertly exfilling that data out in a way that no one would ever guess. Now this is, this is a, a fairly easy method to do and there are more covert ways to do this but, but even looking at that and thinking about it that way it's uh, it's kind of crazy and, and we, what we want to do is we want to start thinking more like these threats and, and, and less like uh, the commercial vendors want us to think and that is, hey, don't worry about it, we'll take care of you, 
push, you know, take, uh, download our signatures for your IDSs and you'll be fine. We need someone in our security team uh, to be actively looking for these threats and, and sometimes that takes a lot of time to dig through logs. Uh, we want to focus on exactly what we're looking for before we go out and look for it because we're just going to kill ourselves by digging through logs. But this is, this is becoming such an issue with all of these breaches that have happened lately. Uh, no one's safe, no company's safe from this and, and really we, we need to be taking this very, very seriously. And so, and that's why, again, why I wanted to talk about covert channels and, and ways we need to think about how uh, your data may be stolen and leaked. Uh, because these people are, are really smart. Uh, so HTTP, another, I mean, y y use your imagination. It's, 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 it's not hard to do these things. It's, it's uh, literally finding the right mindset to, if it is happening on your network, to find it. Um, another great one that I really like, uh, I saw a write-up um, from the, one of the departments uh, in the government, and that was uh, covert channels through DNS, and kind of the same thing using uh, the way that HTTP is used, the GET request. DNS is, is is used the same way. Basic use of DNS is we have a request, we have a response. So the same thing can can be used um, in our in the DNS requests. We, could, we can take a, a string of that data and we can put that string into the DNS request. And when we send the request, we send the DNS request out to a specific DNS server. When we have our, inside the company analysts or the security people that are looking at their logs, the DNS isn't usually something that's looked at super closely. Uh, so what's gonna happen is, uh, what, what I would look for is DNS requests for uh, domains that are that are very domain names that are very long that have huge strings. Um, that might be you know something to look for. You could use TCP dump in a number of ways to look for um, DNS requests that have uh, certain uh, bytes over 256, uh, 256 bytes long. Um, anyways, it, it, just something to think about. So that, that's another way. Uh, an even more sinister way using HTTP is to use SSL or TLS because on the flip side, we're not going to see what's going on and taking place. It's all going to be encrypted. Uh, for your IDS though, one of the things that, that you can look for is when, when the when the like the client, the server, when the when they exchange keys for SSL, we can look for those keys. Maybe those keys are spoofed. Who knows? But but the, there might be something to look for. A little bit of data to grab. Um, it's all kind of up to your imagination. Uh, data exfiltration happens a lot of ways. I even r heard of a, a story that uh, one of the uh, for a particular company. One of the CEOs would go home, he would connect through his cable modem VPN back in, tunnel back into the business. Well, the bad guys knew that this was happening. What they did is on his computer, they were able to rewrite that VPN client software, uh, uh, thick client software, and they were able to uh, tunnel through, back through, exfiltrated data, through back through his, uh, through his tunnel, and back out the other side. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they did that. There wasn't a lot of information. Uh, good, good location or good resources. Mandiant has some great write-ups of how this stuff works. I want to talk more about this, and I will later on. But I just wanted to get uh, a video out there and and get everyone thinking about uh, cover channels, things to look for, uh, use your imagination. Um, I think the crazier the better. I, I. I I think that uh, the way things are, are taking place now, um, the stuff that we're missing is the stuff that's just kind of off the walls. Holy crap, I can't believe they did it that way. Just like this uh, VPN tunnel, exfiltrating, exfiltrating data back through a VPN tunnel.